In the Sports Light is a show you can watch as many times as you want as it remains online. We aim to give you the opportunity to hear from athletes both past and present about their achievements and accomplishments. Now let's join your host, Earl Baston. Now let's rejoin David Bass. And I said, I know, that's good. But I'm gonna try I'm I'm, I'm gonna fix this. And the only way I was gonna fix it is by staying focused and having substance about who I am. Because I'm not a professional, I was not a professional player. Yeah. I was a young man playing professional. And I had to build substance around the young man. So I started my business the second year. Bascom Pro Soccer School, business is still running. I focused on developing myself, educating myself for the business. I walked into the Harrisburg Heat office every day after training. I learned how to market. I learned how to draw contracts. I learned everything. This is my second to third year. I, I got rid of my, my agent. I done my own agency work. I start going out in the community and basically selling and branding myself. So I had bigger contracts outside of my team and the team is looking at me and said, what? how you get Toyota sponsoring you? How you are driving around a Toyota every game and you got every two weeks a new Toyota because what I done, I packaged myself about branding and I made it work. The contracts start coming in, the bigger contracts when the clubs were back then, it was decent, very, very good money. I was very destroyed when I was asked in the media, okay, how much you make? It was like that was going to put a stamp on, if I tell you I'm making a million dollars, it's going to put a stamp on that, okay, now it's okay. So I did, so I made a point. I said, you know what, this is my six year in, so I'm making six figures, if you want to know. I had in the Bermuda Sun. Because what they done is that somebody had surfed and, and called up the Heat and asked him what is the wages that the players make. And uh, the Heat does not, basically, they did not put that information out. So I told them, I said, this is what I make from my school. This is what I leave home with. This is what I'm doing from you to son. I said, I made six figures. I said, and that's it. That's all you get. If you want to put a number behind you, put whatever you want. But that's what I'm at. And if it's not enough money for you, then who cares? But just stay out of my life now. Now you know me, who are you? Let me now go into your books. Let me go open up your bank account and see what you do. See, the most frustrating thing, what I've learned from uh, Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson told me in a parents with him, and Bo Jackson, if you don't know him, you know, baseball, football, he said to me, he says, Mr. Bascom, listen, we are not here for media. This is media is here for us. And you gotta know how to do the win-wins with them. Be very careful and mindful in what you do because they will destroy you. But understand the side that they are. They only cover what you do. Don't let them start covering who you are unless you open yourself up to your people. Because, and what he was saying to me is that, for instance, if I hadn't gotten over my views and going through this process, if I want to get into business stuff, I want to get into things outside, he's saying, now talk about it, release it, but now expect for the wolves to come because now they are now required to get into your personal life. And I said, I'm ready for it, but I couldn't do it no earlier. And that's what had me kind of understand how I can control it, how I control media, I control this process. I Man, I remember some articles. I, I want, I'm trying to think. I had won my first championship after 12 years. Well, before then, I was actually, I scored over 540 goals. And I said, I don't, 540 goals. I won six championships. Six championships. Hold up, I got six rings. And I said, and it's amazing because this is what the question now people ask me, like, Basco, what? I haven't heard much about this. Like, what you do? I said, I'm just a guy, just play this game. And they said, and, and, and I'm looking and saying everything that I went through, I'm a part of the legends for, you know, champion sports with the NBA guys. And, and it's, it's amazing. I even brought them to Bermuda, done all this stuff. And it's everything that I was doing. I saw that there was a different side of media. And I saw that there's covering more my community stuff. I said, well, that's where I'm going to hit it. I'm going to focus on media. We're going to work this together. Let's focus on community. But then after the fact, no matter what happened, I realized that it was still a struggle because I played this game in America. 
this indoor game. I'm not a professional athlete to them. Because they always said when it would go to certain things, this is certain media, so you know, me, you know who you are. And they will always say is that uh, David Bascom, like when we would go play for the national team, you know how I was listed? I was listed as US player, plays in US. I was listed one time as a as a um, former Nor Village player. This is after signing a pro contract. And in my seventh year, I couldn't get the status of being a professional player. So I said, all right, that's cool. And it's, it's now I'm saying this to you only because I'm releasing and letting you know is that we have young men right now that I know they may be going through the same thing. Because see how we look at the US the game in the US. We have to be very careful because this has been a place where a lot of Bermuda's legends have come through. I'm not saying that there's an issue with England. No, because if I, man, I could tell you now, if I knew what I knew and things were going well and I took advantage of education, it probably wouldn't be a good road for me as well. But you know, you can't shun things. You can't shun the American game. I was asked a question about soccer. Well, why, why Americans got to call it soccer? Change the name, wake up people. You go Wikipedia, you go you, you go look at the origin of, of the, the origin of soccer. It actually came from the British. It was actually because soccer in 1818, I think it was 1860s, so just reading about it, it was actually uh, brought through with the upper class that played the game. The lower class basically called it football. So when they realized is that they try to really kind of change it all over and they called it actually association football. So what happened was that when they realized that the lower class had a big population that's playing this game, they now kept the word football. Now you realize that not only America kept soccer because middle to upper class young kids were playing this game. So that's why they kept it. Canada kept it. New Zealand, if I'm correct, kept, kept the name. So it's those things and you know, just learning more about it. It's nothing to do with the name, it's nothing to do with the word. This was, this for more is that, you know what? We have so much pride in our country and we have to be very careful because when we're dealing with media and advertising our young people, don't make them work so hard. We got some young man that's doing well, Nikki Wells. Ah, love him, now I'm a Huddersfield fan. I'm, I'm talking about Huddersfield. I don't even wear like jerseys and stuff. And I'm talking about this young man. I'm like, because everybody thinks that I remember him when he came to my camp. And he used to cut his eyebrows and got these little slats in, all right? And I said, listen, you need to stop. You need to stop with the cutting. But you always knew the guys that had the determination because they loved the game. He didn't have a passion for him, he loves the game. And I praise him. Then you got the young mans like uh, Reggie, Reggie Lamb. Reggie Lamb, good player. And then I'm kind of, I'm watching this process go and I see the same thing. I see the, like the, the, the Baskin and Golem thing going on. And only the process of seeing, like just on media, the process of, okay, I, don't, I, don't, I have to call, I have stats to ask about, like, Reggie Lamb, because I don't know. I, I got, you know, and I just, well, I just want media to understand is that, look at the, look at the guys that came through. Look at the guys that came through. You had uh, the Gumbos, the guys that were pros. You had uh, Newsome. You had, you had some professional guys, uh, Dale Russell who actually also played indoor, professional. But I, even when I was coming up, I didn't hear much about those guys. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't understand. Now you find yourself, career is finished. You find yourself on the sideline um, in a coaching capacity. Um, the passion um, that you show on the sideline, is that is that the same drive you had while you were playing? It's, it's, it's been very interesting. Um, and just from driving back and forward to training, you know, after my, my, my days is, is, you know, after playing for so long, it's very interesting because it's, it's I always come to train and think that, all right, you know, I'm still got it. As we older players, we think we still got a little bit left. What what makes it easier transition is because I'm actually, um, you know, I perform with the guys, you know, I train with the guys every day. I do all the fitness decor, work with them as well. And I think where the game has gotten and with the young players coming into the game um, and still trying to teach them to and, and how to carry the integrity of the game. Um, it's so important. So it's important that you know we stay involved. 
uh, from the drills, from the uh, running aspect, the game awareness, keeping myself involved. So that transition's been, it's been pretty easy, but it's been very tough at, as well, um, because it's, I want the players to do so much, I want them to do well, and when I don't see that old school mentality for the instance of, of doing things simple, it gets more frustrating and I'm more compa you know, com competitive with that. As far as the game's going by, I'm, uh, please, I'm having my time. I'm having my time. Uh, it's, 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 it's fun though, because the guys, the guys give me slack all the time. They rough me up, especially if they try to push a ball through my legs so they can laugh at me after training. Or if I hit a ball wide, just so that I, yeah, back in 1991, you was able to get that on target. So it's fun, it's really fun. Danny Kelly, the Baltimore Blast head coach, tells us about Bascom as a player. Baltimore Blast president and general manager Kevin Healy said Bascom was first an enemy he admired before he became a Blast player. Bascom reflected on a funny time in his childhood with former Manchester City star Sean Goater. Sean Goater and I, we actually, and a couple of friends, we built this, this kind of like a little shack shed. And this was actually, this shed was set up. When I tell you, we had, I mean, car seats, we had everything in the world. It was off the wall, and it was in Sean Goater's yard. So we're all excited after schools were going up there, we're running up there, it's hanging on the shed. So for me and Sean got in an argument. And the argument came over was a, a young female, okay, that I was trying to get. And she liked Sean because Sean was kind of, and I was upset, and I went through this whole process. I'm like, man, I, you know, this is my girl. She wasn't mine. Go to head all tied up, all wrapped up. But Sean was in home one day, and I went up there. I waited till the winds got high, oh, and I wrecked this shed. I wrecked this shed, I tore it apart, I took everything out, I tore it apart. Sean said, somebody, somebody, the shed fell down from the wind. I said, you, I, I'm telling you, the wind was pretty strong, but I'm telling you, this was amazing. So I never told him the story. So now he found out that I actually kind of destroyed the shed. So I, 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 I definitely, I don't apologize because I enjoyed every bit of it. <laughs> <laughs>